Right, in this video I'm going to show you how you can make these lovely brass oil lamps out of vintage brass doorknobs. And they each have a wick and you can actually buy smokeless fuel for them, lamp oil. And they actually run for hours on a fill up of that um, fuel. To use them you unscrew this hexagon top and that pulls the whole wick assembly out and then you can actually fill them up or change the wick and it's completely sealed and then when you've finished using them you screw the top on and again that fully seals that end and you can actually tip them upside down and they won't leak. So you can put them in the pocket of a rucksack or whatever, use them for camping or survive or whatever and like I say they won't leak and perfectly safe to actually carry around. Right, so I've got my brass doorknob and the first thing I do is remove the circlip on the underside here. And then I can pull the handle off or the collar off. So the door handle has a square hole in this end and obviously if it was put on the table like that it'll wobble about so the first thing I've got to do is make the stand and the reason I make the stand first is because then I can actually hold it in the lathe that way round and drill down to make a round hole in this end. And you can make a stand out of virtually anything you could just use a brass collar like that on the underside or you could even use the actual collar that came off of the handle and make that as the stand and you could even screw that onto a piece of wood if you wanted to but I want to keep my oil lamp as small as possible so I'm going to use this um, one ounce brass weight um, to make a stand or if you've got that sort of size bar you can actually just um, make a stand out of um, something like that you want it fairly thick because obviously when I turn it round I'm going to hold it on this diameter to actually do the drilling. And all these bits come out of my brass scrap box. I haven't got any bar that size so this should make an ideal stand. And this stand can actually be soldered onto the brass handle here but it must be concentric for turning round and doing that drilling op. So the first thing I do is put this in the lathe and make this a little bit hollow on this end or a bit of a um, shallow um, recess in there so that it actually sits nicely on the end of the handle. Next a countersink.
and that looks very close, hardly any gap at all, that should be just right. So now I've got my door handle and that can be held in the jaws on this front diameter or let's just see if it holds on the other one. Yeah I can hold it like that and it's running nice and true or true enough. And the only brass screws I've got is 2BA, so I'm going to be using a 2BA tap and this one's going to go in this one like that. The door handle had some um, covering on it, um, I think it's a lacquer, so I've buffed that off on the um, buffing wheel, so it's nice and shiny, clean and ready for soldering, and this one's also been cleaned up ready for soldering as well. So now I just put my 2BA screw in there and screw that one onto the base. I could cut the screw down if I want to, but I shall leave that. And do that one up nice and tight. And I've put a brass rod in the vise here at an angle. So when I solder it, I can actually spin it round and make sure I fill the gap up here with the solder so that it seals it all up. And I use this solder here, which is 60, 40 tin lead. And I can see that's got a good witness all the way round and I can clean off any excess on the buffing wheel. You'll see there that I actually put it around the screw there as well and that seals the screw up in there so it doesn't leak out there either. 
So now I've just cleaned off the excess solder with um, some Swiss files and just done it on the buffing wheel again so it looks really tidy. This end's got to be faced off yet so I'm not worried about that bit of solder there. But I know now that that is completely sealed up and it won't leak and it's reasonably concentric so I can actually put this back in the lathe now and drill this end out. So I've put it back up in the drawers holding on that stand part now and I've um, tapped it and got it reasonably true. It's held nice and tight, you have to do the drawers up reasonably tight. And the drill will actually follow this hole anyway so it doesn't matter if there's a bit of run out. And to clean that hole up and to take that square out, I'm going to have to put a quarter inch BSP um, thread in that one. And the thickness here is okay. If I put the core diameter up to that, I can see I've got nice um, thickness on the wall still. So I shall put that core diameter down and then tap it for the quarter inch BSP. So when you get these door handles to actually make into something like this, make sure it's the nice heavy ones. I get mine from car boot sales or recycling centres or whatever. And I got quite a load of these um, not long ago and I can actually use them to make up all different types of things. So now I use my Sano 80mm self-centering four-jaw chuck and this is the best tapping chuck you can get really because it holds on this square and stops the tap from actually spinning in the chuck. And now I'll put this quarter BSP tap down. I'll put a bit of lubrication on it. And I'll actually finish that on the vise. And I've put a four jaw chuck in the jaws here of the bench vise and I'm holding on the actual stand with the four jaws. It's much better to hold on that one um, than hold on this diameter here because although this brass is quite thick, if you held on the diameter there, there's a good chance of actually denting it. So now I can saw this end piece off.
Then I just flatten it off with a disc sander and then put it back up in the lathe and polish this with a bit of rough emery and then a bit of medium emery so it's nice and flat. So at this stage again I have enough um, actual land on this um, end here to actually hold it in the jaws but if you didn't and you had the quarter inch BSP th thread in there or whatever thread you've got in there you could actually put it on a mandrel for this hop here. And what I'm going to do is just skim that um, end off here and make it nice and flat and tidy up the dents where I held it in the four door chuck. So that's the cylinder part finished. So now I've got a piece of hexagon brass bar about 30 millimeter long. And I've turned that to 518 um, thou, and that's the diameter for a quarter inch BSP thread. And now I'm going to do the undercut at the back here. Using the same tool.
And now I can die cut the quarter inch BSP thread. And before I take it out, I'll test the thread. And that one screws all the way down so the undercut's okay. And now I can centre and drill through for the wick. And when you're making these you want to use a drill smaller than the actual wick size so that the wick is a nice tight fit in the actual bore. So now I can turn that hexagon around in the drawers again and hold on about 8mm and turn for a 1 8 BSB um, thread on this end. So I've turned that diameter to 383 thou and that's the actual diameter for the 1 8 BSP thread. And again I've done the undercut at the back here and put a little chamfer on the front there with the file and now I can actually die cut that one. And I always use good quality HSS dies for this type of work. And these are my homemade die holders And then I put a small chamfer on this end with the centre drill and a larger one on the back end so that the wick can be pulled up through nicely. And then I deburr these sharp edges with a Swiss file and 
buff it around the sharp edges just to clean those burrs off and then that component is finished. So now that one's all deburred and buffed up and there's no sharp edges on it whatsoever and now I use a doughty seal it's a special seal if you're not familiar with these it's made of um, steel around the outside here and in the center there's a special um, rubber insert and it actually seals both sides when you put it onto um, something like a union or um, a component like this you can use them for pneumatic um, hydraulic or water or whatever and they take very high pressure. I've actually seen these um, used in um, equipment up to about 10,000 PSI and they hold that pressure perfectly. So that one goes on the quarter inch BSP end there. You can buy those um, Doughty seals on eBay and then tighten that one up. Incidentally, I forgot to say that this is three quarter inch um, brass hexagon bar so I can use a three quarter inch ring spanner to tighten that one up. And then to finish off, I use another piece of hexagon brass and drill and tap for the one eighth BSP deep enough so it can go right down over this thread here. Um, you can use hexagon or you can just use a round piece of um, brass bar and knurl it if you want. Or you can even make like a little ball top. Um, that goes on it to make it look more decorative and then the 1 8th doughty seal goes on the top there and the lid to close off the wick and keep it all sealed up so you can actually take it around with you without it leaking screws on the top and you can just tighten that up by hand that one you don't have to use a spanner on that one it won't leak and if you want to make this top one so that the 1 8 doughty doesn't fall off at all you can actually make the groove a little bit wider and maybe a little bit deeper using a very um well i use a two millimeter groove tool just to go down a little bit in that one and then i put a very small o-ring which is stretched over that one and it holds tight in that um thread undercut and then when you put the 1 8 doughty seal on you push it and twist it as you put it on and it goes over that o-ring and it can't fall off and i didn't have to do that with the quarter inch one because that doughty has a special ring in the center which is a bit smaller than the diameter of the thread and it pushes over the thread and drops into the undercut and that one won't fall off i got these doughties on ebay like i said i got uh, about 50 of them they're not that expensive and i use them on my air compressors or whatever so like i said earlier buy some wick and i think this is about um must be about six millimeter in diameter you can get all different sizes but make sure you drill the hole for the wick so it's um smaller than the actual diameter so that you have to actually twist it through like this to get it through or you can actually push it through with a straight piece of stainless steel or whatever it must be nice and tight like that so you can just pull it through and then cut it off a little bit longer than the actual drop And also cut the top so it's not flared out at the top there 
and then pull it back down in just to have about two or three millimeter protruding from the top and you can use a small funnel to fill them up or use a syringe like this and it is actually best to buy smokeless lamp oil I haven't got any at the moment but this is um, ordinary lamp oil and then put the wick down inside screw the top on and tighten it up and you can tip it up a bit to actually soak the wick through but that's um, one thing about having the actual wick nice and tight in there they won't actually leak if they fell over or whatever it actually takes a while to soak that wick and that's the job done.